W E F U N K. We funk. This movie, like we said, is mired in controversy. And, uh, you know, it's not the first time controversial movies have uh, popped up. I don't think we've actually watched any on Netflix yet. But, uh. Yeah, I guess not really anything too, uh. Nothing too controversial, I suppose, on Netflix so far. Correct, correct. Me and um, you have had our disputes on XOXO and The War Machine. Major controversy yeah. on uh, The Hater. I guess The Hater was kind of a <laughs> controversial one. Again, that's a foreign film. Sure. But, uh, yeah, it was. Me and you had our big beef about the uh, internet. <laughs> the big debate. <laughs> but uh, that movie had a little bit of controversy again. Like, But much like this, dude. This, th- this one had more legs behind it. But it's the same mm-hmm. thing. It's like, a, like an independent foreign film that nobody would have heard or cared about if it wasn't for the controversy. You know what I mean? So, the hair was good. Yeah, much better than <laughs> this. Know? And that was, in like a, <laughs> that was in the New York Film Fest. So that's why right. that we watched it or whatnot. Like this one is well, more going about- crazy, Well, going into my crazy – before I get into my too many of the crazy fans. But this uh, – we, well, we'll say this. Cuties was at the Sundance Film Festival. Okay. I see. So, okay. I guess, though, in terms of other controversial movies – as we'll kind of get into cuties, I, I think that the obvious parallel we'd have to uh, just kick right off with, but would be kids, which yes, yes. I mean was uh, for our generation. I mean, you were like almost the age that the kids were supposed to be, maybe a little bit younger. But when kids came out, like I probably I saw mean, it for the first time when I was in like seventh or eighth grade. They were supposed to be in like yeah. high school or so. Yeah, I probably saw it like eighth or ninth grade for the first time. That movie still makes me feel as uncomfortable as it ever did. But <laughs> I mean, those kids—that's another one too. Where those kids, like they weren't like Robin from Project Power, where it was a bunch of forty, thirty-year-olds playing kids, like. The kids and kids were a bunch of fucking city kids. No, that was like a 15 year old Rosario Dawson, right? And like, you know, Telly, where they were all. Just you know, them off the street. Which is, like, again, right, much like this movie, Cuties, and we'll get into it later, but uh, uh, a part of the controversy is just the fact that the actresses are 11-year-old girls, where if it was, yeah. you know what I mean, like a, an American Pie sort of thing where they get Luke Perry to play fucking a teenage, you know, a, a, a high schooler, then it's sure, a different story. Sure. But kids, you're right, that was one of the big things is that they actually were kids. But also that had, like, you know, AIDS or, you know, HIV at the time was... Wow like a huge social thing that was you know with major impact in you know the late 90s or whatever so that was a big but, backdrop of it but uh, and again not to get into too many of my thoughts and feelings about this later on but at least kids it was teenagers you know what i mean and it's one of the big cuties yeah, thing sure. is that they're fucking 11 year old fucking kids so like, <laughs> yeah yeah you know what I mean? I can wrap my mind around, like, I, Casper and fucking Chloe having sex I mean, versus, like... Yeah, no, you know. absolutely. No, for sure. You're but, definitely more age-appropriate. Same thing with American Pie. That's why, like, kids in American yeah, Pie exactly. were, you know... But I guess in terms of uh, uh, cuties, another kind of, you know, one like I, I referred to earlier, but remember uh, Hound Dog, which was the controversial one where Dakota Fanning... Got like oh, there was like a brutal race yes, scene with yes, her when yes, she yes, was a yes, kid. Yes, yes. That was a much more like disturbing whole thing than anything that happened in Cuties. You know what I mean? And she was like yeah. was an eleven year old girl at the time of an you know as an actress getting like Dude, you know I'll, in like a really hardcore scene. I'll kind of stick with this uh, kind of controversial and also like this cult classic movie, uh, but it's also like a foreign film, so I'll stick with it. There was this Italian movie or the Italian director from this movie from the 60s. Maybe it was the 70s, early 70s, 60s, but it was called Cannibal Holocaust. And it was... Sounds about, awesome. Like, I mean, it sounds like a geeked up like classic. A, <laughs> a plane that like crashed in the jungle. And it's filmed, though, like a documentary and about these people that like run upon okay, like, I think I've heard forest of it. Yeah, jungle. Yeah, yeah. And they get like killed and eaten by these cannibals. Uh, it was controversial because they killed real animals like on the camera in the movie. Like, okay, them, killing nice. a turtle. But what the director did was fucking literally like to really sell it is had all the actors in the movie uh, just disappear, like put them up in hotel rooms and was like, yo, just disappear after we're done filming this. Uh, literally got no name actors and made it seem like they were all killed and murdered, right? That the when director you say disappear, you mean like, hey, do me a favor, uh, don't take any other parts in films and uh, yeah, exactly. rele- no, relegate yourself like, to obscurity for the rest of your stay life. Stay in these hotel rooms, not the rest of your life, but like for a while, stay in these hotel rooms. The director was eventually arrested for murder and it was like appeared in the Italian courts. 
It wasn't until all they, the like, actors thought finally that he was... came out of hiding and like walked in the courtroom. We're like, yo, dude, like he didn't film us wow, getting murdered. Hilarious. Like, we're alive. It was a fake movie that the good director got. It's a very WWF go. scenario where like the fucking <laughs> dude, cops real, show right? up like, oh, dude, uh, somebody blew up Vince McMahon's car? What the well, hell? He got arrested for like not helping, like literally filming people being murdered and eaten. And okay, then... wow. They came out of hiding where I too where we were it was acting. We were all alive. <laughs> it's a movie, bro. It's, you know, kinda you know. like the Blair Witch back in our day, but like this is a little more extreme. Yes, the for sure. No, I think that's where like, uh, Okay, that's interesting. I guess there are a couple of like the classic seventies era ones. I guess the uh, uh, one that kind of reminds me of that one, but I've never seen it. You might have uh, I'd say you have better odds of seeing it than me, but uh, Faces of Death Never watched it. Okay. Why would I have been around watching that? I don't know. You're a bit more of like a horror sci-fi. Because, I mean, it's, you know. More of a sci-fi. Faces of Death is literally just videos of people dying. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> science fiction about it. Like getting hit by a fucking train. There's nothing train. to sci nor fi about the uh, <laughs> real life crazy. I was not uh, ever able to, like, how about Rotten.com? And yeah, none of that shit. See, was, like, because uh... for me, even today's parallel for all that stuff, though, and I feel way more fucking controversial in my book than Cuties, but, like, Saw oh, or yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah, yeah, yeah. or any of these, like, do you... You, 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 like you will watch those movies, right? Kind of. I'm not a huge horror person, but I'll go out and, like... I won't go to the theaters. I mean, I'm still a coward. Like, I still get afraid of horror movies. Okay. But, like, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I forget that you're as well a giant puss, much like me. Yeah. So, I'm right. watching them at home, like, in control of the volume and everything. But I would watch one of those movies knowing it's actors than I would ever, like, watch a Faces of Death or uh, what was the website you said? Rotten or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. yeah, yeah. Then you said you weren't allowed to. Even if I, my mom was like, go on whatever you want, I wouldn't have gone on any of those sites, dude. You know what I, mean? oh, no, I like, wasn't that I wasn't allowed to. I just was never. When I said wasn't able, I'm just saying myself. Like I yeah, can't okay, sure, watch sure, fucking sure. Rotten yeah. com. You know what I mean? Like, and it was hilarious because back then most of us didn't have uh, internet at our houses, so it was like mm. we would use the school internet and like the only website because they would block porn, but they wouldn't block uh, and some porn sites they wouldn't even block. But it was like the only time you could watch like the sociopath, the local sociopath in school would like yeah, rip yeah, that yeah, up yeah. on like the library fucking computer. school computer. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. We all had the Mark Hahn. Yeah. Class. But that's what I think about those fucking nuts. Well, I they, think more They're like, like the people uh, that show up and watch Saw. Because even for a horror movie, I'll see fucking yeah. The Ring or whatever. But I don't want to just watch somebody get fucking their face mutilated. Like, that's for not sure, a movie, sure. you know? Well, then what about uh, controversially and it's still like killing? What about like natural born killers, though? That movie okay, that was is a controversial ultra one. controversial. And it's uh, – now that movie I think is fucking – Great. Love it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, cinematic course. fucking gold, dude. Still Mickey in Mallory, love with Juliette not... Lewis, fucking uh, ever <laughs> since seeing it. Always wanted my I mean, Mork and Mindy fucking uh, relationship. Nice, nice, nice. It's just, and that cast too Robert Downey Jr., Woody Harrelson, Tommy Lee Jones, Juliette Lewis, fucking. The movie's crazy. Yep, yep. And uh, Ronnie Dangerfield. Ronnie Dangerfield, and... great scene. <laughs> dude. I got another one that's kind of one you might not, well, this one you might not think of controversial, but it really was. What about the uh, Seth Rogen, James Franco movie, The Interview, where uh, I literally... I vaguely remember The Interview. We almost went to war with North Korea because they made a goddamn oh, movie yeah. about fucking killing Kim Jong. Oh, yeah, and then, yeah. like... The Sony hack. That's true, and that. yeah, like, yeah, Sony got all hacked because of that. They didn't release it in the theater. I was gonna say, did like, it not get released? Yeah, because North Korea is like, we'll fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah, we don't fuck around with that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah, eventually Netflix did it, but like, well, did you I ever see it? it? Yeah, hell yeah, it's on Netflix right is now. It, is it's it like, good at all? Or it's funny enough. It's just like know, a regular Seth goofy Rogen Seth Rogen. Uh, but, I would say yeah. another kind of Oliver, another Oliver Stone one, and like uh, with some political ties, like the interview. But there was that nine uh, Oliver Stone nine eleven. I guess that was maybe a little bit more of a documentary or whatnot, and this might be a little bit more of like a yeah. New York centric story. Uh, where it was For just sure. like they didn't want it in theaters because there's literally fucking people jumping out of the building and whatnot and being recorded on their, you know, like just mm. very, very uh, close, in depth look at the whole 9 11 situation. And that was, you know, for me, again, that's not the kind of thing that I'd want to watch. 
You know, I was yeah. around for 9-11. I don't necessarily need to watch the Oliver Stone documentary. Do I think that it should be fucking boycotted? In New York, don't put it in your theater if you don't want to. I get it. You know what I mean? But do I think that the movie should be fucking stopped or anything like that? Or do I think there's anything wrong with making it? You know, I would say definitely not. That one, I think, was more of a documentary than a movie, but... Sure. Well, he also made W while W was still in office. About like, look at this asshole. James <laughs> yeah, but I mean, W was such like a... Uh, Everybody was on the same page that W is a dope. There are some more, I guess, the main uh, uh, demo of really controversial ones, though, would be the religious ones. All right, from our demo, uh, from our uh, uh, era, it would be uh, Passion of the Christ with Mel Gibson and just like the extreme violence. Which they just announced they're making the sequel to that movie right now, Passion of the Christ. Literally about <laughs> what, him. Easter? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's exactly what they're making. And Jim Caviezel said the resurrection? It's going to be the biggest grossing movie of all time. And Mel Gibson's directing it again. Jim Caviezel's right, yeah. playing Jesus again. Uh, so I mean, if that's you're going to do but Good then, Friday, you got to do Easter Sunday for us. You know what I mean? But Let's then there's the also the last, uh, the last Temptation of Christ, which is the uh, Scorsese. Uh, of course. Willem Dafoe. Which is a real movie. masterpiece, honestly. Fucking great movie. Willem Dafoe, like you said, is amazing. When he's knocking dudes out at the uh, market, come on, it's the best. <laughs> But that one, I, I think, was a little bit more controversial. It was a little bit before our time. But uh, I think that was more just controversial in, like, the everybody's reception to it. And that was uh-huh. back in, like, the 70s or maybe maybe early 80s when religion was uh, held in a little bit higher regard, I'd say, well, than I'd it say is any... now after all of the fucking, you know, just a, we're at a different time in the world with religion. Well, for sure. I mean, I don't know. Even when Dogma came out, people went fucking bonkers. Jay and Silent Bob, you know, uh, fighting the devil. Really? I, I love Dogma, but I don't remember. Was, yeah, was so that, do I, that was a controversial. On, the Catholic Church, Buddy Jesus, and George Carlin as a cardinal. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. There was a ton Catholicism of Catholicism really now. Anything with the church or religion is kind of crazy. The reason the passion, though, because uh, the last temptation of the Christ was controversial because, again, that I think he like bangs Mary. Uh, he's punching people out in the market. The reason the passion of the Christ was so controversial, though, if you remember, is because it was also like the height of Mel Gibson's being like, no, Jewish people are the worst. And, like, his whole thing in the movie, like, showed the Jewish people, like, we're going to kill yeah. Jesus because we're that, evil and Jewish. I thought that was the years, but I forgot that you're right. It was before Jews were, like, rant, totally portrayed and like, saying that Dude, you're making, you're making the Jewish people okay. look really bad in this that movie. That is a very good like, call. Yeah, fuck them. <laughs> you're right. Because that was definitely years before the whole, the whole rant. But I remember uh-huh. at the time, that is true, like, uh, all the, like, uh, uh, Catholics. Well, I guess who was even mad at that movie? Because I don't even think the Catholics were. Because, the Jewish community. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it just? <laughs> because they were like <laughs> portrayed as just total scumbags. Yeah, dude. hilarious. I also have one that's because uh, uh, just real more. quick about the uh, uh, you know Catholic Church, but there was in more recent years movies dealing with all of the you know sex scandals and molestation yeah. stuff and whatnot, which is definitely you know at, at one point, like I said in the eighties, was maybe a little bit more you know uh, 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 rarefied ground to step on, and now it's pretty fucking common knowledge, you know what I mean, and For commonplace. Real, man, like, so would people go as crazy on SNL? If like Sinead O'Connor ripped up a picture of the Pope right now, would people be like, "Oh, this is yeah, crazy"? Yeah, no, exactly. Or dude, people no. be like, "No, I get it." And honestly, <laughs> like, dude, just to think about it, it is a good. I don't want to be controversial ourselves here for uh, you know for, right. ca- <laughs> for Catholics or not, but I would say that just in terms the fact that there's a major sex abuse scandal in 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 uh, uh, any organization in particular. You would like to see their numbers take a severe hit from it. And that is what happened to the Catholic Church, really. You know what I mean? Like, after all that came down, people have just stopped, like, in recent years compared to 40 years ago or 30 years ago when we were kids, when that was, like, a hush, more of a hush-hush thing. Catholicism was taken a lot more seriously. So the fact that that was made public has definitely hurt how serious people take it. And, And like, it hasn't slowed down, you know what I mean? It's like... You're right, because when people think of the church, that's like, especially a lot of people, uh, Catholic church, especially for like the Ron the Waiters out there, the first thing they want to say is like, oh, little boys. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's no, it's, it's fucking, uh, you know, 
really done, and as well it should, you know, there's a huge scandal like that, it should do horrible, pe- it fucking did worse than Penn State football, <laughs> fucking nobody <laughs> gave a shit, you know what I mean, like, their coaches are out there molesting kids and they're fucking tailgating the next day, like, I don't give a fuck, but you know. Yeah, wow, you're right, sports versus religion, you know, <laughs> Carol's a legend, yeah. Jesus is a rumor. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I would say the other thing besides uh, uh, religion that's always controversial is race is always a controversial one in uh, movies. Uh, of course, one in our near fe- uh, our childhood and probably my first introduction to uh, Edward Norton, but uh, American History X. Okay, um, yep, great call. That movie is controversial for no other reason than the white skinheads beating the black dudes on the basketball court. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> well, the, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Is it? The, no, uh, Ed, the Edward no, Norton no running game way. at point guard? Uh... <laughs> yeah. That giant 900-pound guy is fucking running center? Come on. I what remember, we, we... like, in high school, that movie being very powerful to me and thinking it was amazing, and then watching it, like, a couple of years ago and feeling that it was very douchey and didn't stand the test of time. I remember being like, dude, uh, why, did I li- why, why did I think this movie was so amazing back in the day? Like, Dude, look up the story of the director that walked off the movie. I forget his name, but I, we might have talked about this on one of the podcasts before, but if you look up the director's name... Uh, like on like I used to be like in the VHS box. The director's name was like a fake director's name, or was a director's name from like the thirties that used to direct like B horror movies that they would just throw on movies sometimes if a director walked off. Okay, set. interesting. So they, the director left American History X because like Edward Norton was such a fucking douchebag. Wow. Kind of like took control of the movie and made it more about his character. Whereas the guy was trying to make more of a movie about like the skinhead movement in LA at the time. Okay. And Edward Norton was more about like, no, it should be about me and Eddie Furlong and family. <laughs> and uh, yeah, again, yeah. dude, you're right. Like watching that movie back in the day, I was like, wow, this movie's fucking crazy. Like, so good and then like i'm sure if i watched it now i'd be like this is fucking corny as fuck but also for me just kind of growing up in the northeast in suburban new york city i just had like never really heard any fucking like white nationalist talk like that from in real life for you know what i mean like i knew that the kkk existed but i had never seen any thing positive or glor- glorifying that which like there's parts of the movie that are glorifying the- so it was just like a very when i was a kid watching it it was like a total mind fuck and then the whole the uh uh, uh curb stomping scene bite the, fucking, curb, bite the curb is fucking as hardcore as it gets and then the whole ending spoiler alert but bradley cooper dies at the end yeah, uh, john connor doesn't make it <laughs> but uh you know that's, definitely that's- the uh that's a, a great one, though, for sure. And race definitely always uh, a controversial <laughs> subject, even like, you know. Uh... There's another one that's uh, really crazy. And again, it's from, uh, you might know this one. I think it's from like the 20s, but it's called Birth of a Nation. Oh, yeah, no, whole, for sure. The whole movie is like a glorification of like the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, well, Birth of a Nation and like but, Triumph of Wills are both like, those are like actual propaganda films. For sure. Well, like, Birth of a Nation is crazy, though, because like they still show it in film classes because not only is it this super racist movie that should be shown, but they have to show it because it's also like one of the first movies to do like cutaway scenes yep. and like fade outs. And yeah, like, no. invent- so much stuff that's still using movies. <laughs> I was gonna day. say, yeah, so it was. It's like the like, most wow, revolutionary like, movie of all time, sure. <laughs> and it's about like the worst subject in the world. But yeah. they have to show it because it's like, well, fucking like they were the first to ever do this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're I know that super uh, racist and all. When they were advertising that movie, and this is a true fact, they hired like two hundred extras to dress up as Ku Klux Klan members and ride horses down Times Square, in New York City. Uh, advertising the movie in the theaters. Wow. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, man. I mean, it was in, like, 1913 or some shit. Yeah, 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 exactly. It was, like, literally the guy was, like, a disgruntled (laughs) ex-Southern. Yeah, yeah. But it was... uh, And those cutaways aren't on point. But you're right, though. though. It's definitely most known for being, like, the most revolutionary film of all time in (laughs) terms of, like, being one of the first, like, talking pictures and all that kind of shit. It's just, like, like, a lot of the movie tricks we use to this day, like, stem from that movie. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. I saw it in my, like, fucking film, my one (laughs) film class I took in college. It was, like, one of the... uh, And it is just... 
I saw in the other club I'm a member of. <laughs> um, I guess the only other one I would really think of is, I think to me, maybe the first controversial movie that like I heard about kind of growing up as a kid. And then when I worked at Blockbuster, I was finally like, Dude, I'm going to watch this thing. And I yoinked the VHS and watch it home. But Clockwork Orange was always a movie I was told not to watch. Don't watch okay. Clockwork Orange. My mom was always wow. like, I mean, it was very bad, and then I watched it. I was like, I mean, it was kind of stupid. It's kind of boring. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went through my like uh, book, uh, in high school, my like Kubrick phase, book. where I tried to force myself to like that movie, and I watched <laughs> it like fifty times because I thought it was like cool to like go home and watch Clockwork Orange. And I silly Willy Wally. So I like tried my hardest to really like it. And you uh, fucking showed up to school the next day with a kiss star drone <laughs> around your eye. <laughs> I mean, I've always wanted to pull the Bart Simpson and go as a droogie for Halloween. I've never, <laughs> yeah, uh, dude, I've no never doubt. But I mean, <laughs> definitely the rape scene is pretty crazy, yeah. and the whole fucking forced uh, uh, making him watch all the torturous shit is definitely mm. crazy. But that's one of those in 1970. It might have been fucking badass. We grew up watching that. Like I watched The Terminator when I was eight years old. Like this is nothing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like for real, this is not fucking anything that I've. Uh... Terracana, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's like it's just a different. Uh, uh, whole thing very slow and dark and disturbing, but mm. nothing like you know, nothing like the, a '90s action film. So yeah, nothing like Natural Born Killers. I mean, if you're talking like like I said earlier, but like if you're talking like level of like controversy and like outright violence, you know, Clockwork or- Natural Born Killers makes Clockwork Orange like a movie for kids. Yes, one hundred percent, for sure. They don't have silly costumes. And, and uh, Saw makes natural born killers look like that. You know what I mean? So, so I mean, I don't think, I mean, the first Saw, I'm going to say, even though I said I'm not a big horror movie fan, but the first Saw is amazing, dude. It's really good. Like, but it's just fucking gross end. or well, hostile. First, I might not even be like referring to this to the, the right movie. The first one really isn't. The, uh, I always say right, about well, the Saw. fucking the next was, 11 but words. But two through so. 20 are <laughs> yeah. all like the hostile films where it's just like... Okay, is Hostile the one that I'm thinking about? Because they get confused. But the one that's just yeah, like hostile. a straight-up torture fucking movie. Hostile, 100%. Okay. I've never seen those movies right. because it's exactly that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Belgium the other Saw movies kind of turn into that. But the first Saw movie is very good, dude. Yeah, no, it's, it's like the... Who is it? It's like fucking the dude from Princess Bride or something hilarious. Isn't the dude it? from like... Princess Bride, but also like uh, <laughs> is it Donald actually that Glover. guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it is. Carrie Mueller. Yeah, I Harry mean, Wales or like whatever. Donald Glover is uh, like the main detective in it. So okay, it's got yeah, some yeah. Legitimacy in it. And more, first one's more like a thriller versus the other ones are just like campy horror uh, mutilation movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like fucking Texas Chainsaw, like the Rob Zombie like genre. Chainsaw. Exactly. None of those Rob Zombie movies do it for me at all because that's the same thing. It's just like, let's gut them and never cut away. Same thing with a lot of those like Japanese horror movies. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, The Audition <laughs> or like uh, Ichi Kills, dude. Never yeah, in a million yeah. years would I watch those fucking movies, dude. And they're supposed to be like, Ichi Kills is supposed to be like cinematically like amazing. And like, there's no way I'm yeah, gonna I'll watch. Take this your guy word for it. Fucking pluck some guy. So is Birth of a like, Nation. Shit. I'm not watching it. Goddamn it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Big out. W E F U N K. We funk.